morning, I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and we welcome you to the State Palace Theater here in beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana, for our main event of the evening. 12 rounds of heavyweight action between these two great warriors. All right, guys, we went over the rules in the dressing room. Let's have a nice clean fight. All right, touch gloves. Let's go. Opening stanza of this 12 round fight. When we get matchups like this, guys that just won't quit, they'll be there every step of the way, like Gaddy Wars. Sometimes there comes a point where one fighter thinks he's got himself an advantage. He's done something great. But then the other fighter doesn't go away. How does that play out in the minds of each fighter? Usually it doesn't affect the kind of guys you just mentioned, Gaddy and Ward. They may not have to cement these guys. They're already set in their ways. They know what they have to do. They're not going to get thrown off just because somebody's still there. Oh, and they decide to trade there. There's a taste of the sweet science. You see the skill he has in counterpunching. And you know what he's doing? He's taking his opponent's jab away. <laughs> he took a shot, but he came back with a right hand of his own. He's getting after it. Here comes another punch. It is a seesaw battle early on here. Amazing stuff out of these two. Both these guys obviously hopeful that their cut men will be up to the task tonight. What does it take to be a great cut man? And you know, that's a great question. First of all, you better have the right coagulants, the right chemicals, the right medications in that corner. Avertine, adrenaline. And you have to have Vaseline where you can put it on it. But the most important thing, you have to be calm. You can't panic. And you have to put pressure on that cut, just the right amount of pressure. And then you put those medicines in it. And then you better have a fighter that can give you a round or two. He can move around and not get caught right away. Give the medicine a chance to work. there on the punch by Bazooka. He took a shot, but he gives one of his own. A left hand scores. And there he counters back against his opponent. Dynamite showing you a little defensive skill there. Able to move away from that punch. Coming to the end of this round, Joe and Teddy with you ringside. Teddy, a round like that where it's a lot of busy activity and both guys being busy. When you were a trainer, are those the kind of rounds that you prefer or do you like the pace to be a little slower? Does it depend on each guy? No, if I have a fighter, I'd rather have a guy fighting a guy that you never see him. <laughs> Leave me the heck alone. And where I'm in control all the time. But the fans love to see a fight like that. Good work with the uppercuts. Nice job there. A nice crisp hook after a fine defensive effort. Nice block by Dynamite.
Very well done by both men to fire off those right hands. Halfway through round number two. Lands flush with the combination upstairs. Super two punch combo by Dynamite. Blocks that punch. right there, but then he targeted one right back. Keep on. Don't give him a chance to set his feet and get it. And round number three is underway. Good job by drawing in his opponent and then landing the counterpunch by Dynamite. Teddy, I know he's up on the scorecards here. He's got to be up on the scorecards, but he is getting really pushed here. Yeah, he is. You know, this is a development fight. This is a fight where you come out of it and you get better. That doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes you just get another W. He is learning. Getting away from one that was coming at him. Right back to the work up top. How is he able to do this? How is he able to take these shots? You know, one time Muhammad Ali talked about taking a chin. He had one of the great chins of all time. And what he basically talked about was that... When you start to get hit those shots, you start to go down a hallway, and then you go into a gray room. You go from a light room to a gray room, and at the end of the hallway, you see a dark room. You don't want to go to that dark room, and you have a choice. You put your feet down, you start backing up. I'm not going to that dark room. This guy is not being taken to that dark room. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Good block by Bazooka. Able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. Nice block by Dynamite. Does it surprise you that he's not going to the body as much as he could be? Well, what surprises me is that he doesn't have the intuitiveness, you know, just, just the instinct to understand to recognize the situation that's part of the ability of a good fighter to recognize what he should be doing in a certain situation he's not seeing that he should be going downstairs we 
come to the end of the round. A round that I'm having a tough time trying to think about who won. I can only imagine what the judges are thinking about. Teddy, if there's one thing you look for in a round like that, say, okay, I'm going to give it to this guy over this guy, what is it? Well, the first thing is, if I'm a judge, I take a little notepad and I make a little mark down blue or red corner what he did early. Because sometimes a judge has a tendency to forget what was done early and only go with what went late. Protecting his head well with his guard. Putting his punches together, landing two shots there. Great movement to get away from those punches. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. Well done that time, landing the counter punch. Ninety seconds to go in round number four. Good block by Bazooka. Wow! Big shot, the left crashed home. Blocks away that headshot. And a good counter by Bazooka. That's a forceful two-punch combo by Bazooka. Place counter punch by Dynamite. Get it out, get it out. Well placed counter punch by Bazooka. End of the round here, a round that saw a lot of action. The kind of round that fans pay to be here to see. Well, these are TV friendly fighters, and we figured that coming in. Committed to the combination punching now. It's working out well up top. Targeting that head with the combination punching. Upstairs. Oh, and he comes in again, landing well. I don't know how they are keeping this up. They are setting such a scorching pace of action in this fight. He scored well after being hit himself. Teddy, this is one of those moments where you just wish you could pick up the phone and call up the world and say, tune in. Everybody should be watching this, right? I have a cell phone. I might do that right now. <laughs> Start dialing. Halfway through this round here. How about a 
return the sender with the left hand. Back and forth exchange. Blocked by Dynamite. Lumbering left hand puts him down. From a big shot, now he's got to have some big guts to move along. You're going to find out exactly what he's made of. Comes right back with some offense of his own. So here we are, all wondering, can he survive the start of this round after the way we saw him go down in that last round? Well, it's up to his opponent. Now, his opponent gets a little careless and he rushes in a little bit too close. He can get a chance to grab those hands and tie him up. And then he can kill a little of the clock, survive. Nice work with the jab on the outside. Every gym's got one of those double-ended backs, right? They give you the movement, you gotta hit that moving target, work on your accuracy. He's making it so that his opponent never had to work on one, Teddy. He's just sitting right there, right in front. No head movement whatsoever. No, not at all. He didn't have one in his gym, that's for sure, because he just does not know how to move his head. The old timers would say he gets insulted if you miss him. but he sends it right back. Teddy, is this becoming a mental thing with him? I mean, he's not firing off the big power punches. I gotta wonder why. You know, that's a good question. Sometimes a guy is making a solid agreement in his mind that maybe if I don't hit him hard, he won't hit me hard back. He's not confident enough now to throw the punches without worrying about what to come back at him. Offense from defense by Bazooka. Bazooka's sticking to his game plan regardless of the fact that he's been down in this fight. Yeah, and one threat you could compliment him for, Joe, you could say he, he understands who he is, he understands his identity, he's going to win or lose with that. But on the other hand, there are some changes he has to be aware of. Oh, he hooks off the jab to the body. Final 10 seconds of the sixth round. Well, 
if the second half of this fight is anything like the first half we just witnessed, then, oh boy, is it going to be fun watching this fight down the stretch. And I don't think it can change. These guys came here with a certain attitude, a certain mindset, and it's not going to be able to change now. There's no way of all of a sudden in mid-fight being able to go to a defensive fight or a different strategy. What you see is what you get, and you're going to get it the rest of the night. Now another left. Undoubtedly, the most effective element of his entire arsenal tonight is his jab. He's so committed to fighting on the outside, and he's jabbing away beautifully. Well, Customato used to tell me, Teddy, when you're in doubt, jab. Well, this fighter, when he's been in doubt, he's jab. When he's been sure of himself, he's jab. As you said, he's made a jab fest of this all night long. Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. Good, strong uppercut. He comes right back with it after taking one. Blocks that punch. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. Reaching the halfway mark of this round. Able to counter that attack. Just missed scoring with that punch. And another right hand comes in. What a fight. What a great, great, non-stop action fight this has been. You're taking too many punches. Hands up. Beat it to the punch. Good combination landing there. Coming towards the end of the seventh round. Ten seconds to go. As this round comes to an end, Teddy, you just get the sense that at any point this fight could come to an end because it is being fought with bad intentions. Yes, these guys are not behaving like guys that are coming here thinking about going to the scorecards. They're letting everything go in every punch. His opponent wanted the body. He wouldn't give it to him. Good job landing three punches by Bazooka. Locked that away. It was targeted for his head. And a well-placed counter by Dynamite. He got hit, but he sends it right back. Blocks that belt line well. He gets off with a combination up top.
One minute to go in a round that feels like an all-time classic. Punch for punch, they're meeting each other. Good exchange, he fires back. Parries the punch, comes back with the hook. A little double jab to the head. Again to the melon. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. As we come to the end of the round, Joe and Teddy with you ringside. Teddy, that's one of those rounds where I wonder what were the judges looking for because it's tough to kind of draw a line between those two fighters. Yeah, very close, but one of those rounds where you could steal it. You did a little bit more in those last 30, 20 seconds. Maybe that's the impression the judges are left with. Multiple punches coming in now. Pulls the trigger right away with the left hand after getting tagged himself. He scored well after being hit himself. He missed with that headshot. How about that exchange? This is just beautiful to watch. Watch how he just links one to the next, Teddy. A beautiful sequence, almost like musical notes being played. Well, exactly. It's a nice tool because it just follows. One, as you said, follows the other. Nice and smooth. Excellent counterpunch by Bazooka. Well, he took one right there, but then he targeted one right back. Dynamite's got a bad cut now that's opened up on his cheek. Great fight. I mean, just a great fight. Both guys giving their all back and forth. It doesn't get much better. Doubles up the jab to the head. Able to dismiss it. been a very entertaining fight a little time to reflect here at the end of this round my thoughts being this i would really be surprised if we go to a decision here it just has that kind of feel to it yeah it has a feel to me like going to one of those places where you can eat all the pasta you can for one price you know and some guys get carried away they eat about five bowls well these guys they're gonna have a stomach ache at the end somebody is gonna wind up not standing at the end Able to cover up that gut. Really a lot of consistency from him with the right hand. 
just well-timed, well-placed punches time and time again right now. Very accurate. Yeah, very accurate, Joe. He's really placing his punches. He's thinking it out. He's seeing the picture, and he knows exactly where he wants to put them. Excellent counterpunch by Dynamite. Dynamite's proving to be elusive. Oh, everybody will tell you, you can't get away with that. What a big, wide-sweeping whiff that was. Well, you can get away with it if the guy doesn't want to throw back, but if this guy wants to start throwing back, then you're not getting away with it. He's bleeding from his cheek. away from those headshots with his defense up top. One minute to go in this round. Neither man has decided to slow down at all. Oh, boy, what a round. Trying to score up top, but off the mark there. the sense this fight could be heading towards a stoppage. Takes one to give one. He comes back with a right hand. Good counter punch. Oh boy, look at this. Right from the get-go, they go after one another. They remind me of my 15-year-old son going to the dinner table. shot now he gives a left blocks <laughs> that punch Way through what is one of the best rounds you'll ever see. Just great action. No, it's unbelievable. I mean, if you love roller coasters, you go to an amusement park. If you want to see left hooks, right hands, every direction, great chins, great endurance, great heart, you come to this fight. You stay right here. Looks like he has some blood under his eye around the cheek. <laughs> he took a shot, but he gives one of his own. A left hand scores. And that's what fighters do. Pulls the trigger right away after taking one. Nice exchange. Both right hands landed. Trading 
right hands. Boy, is this a dangerous biz. Blocks the headshot. Blocks away that headshot. Teddy, making predictions in boxing is often a dangerous task, but I'll make one right here that seems pretty obvious to me as we come to the end of that round here. This fight is going to be a brutal display as long as it lasts. It's kind of like going and watching that home run contest. Nobody's trying to hit singles or doubles. You know they're all going for the fences. For the 12th and final time, the last round has arrived. He takes a shot and then commits to giving one right back. Able to dismiss that body shot. Well done that time, landing the counter punch. Listen, he's still being highly competitive, even though you would have to think, if you're judging this fight at all, that he's way behind. Does that give him hope that still there's a chance that he could score the knockout and get this win? Yeah, because his attitude is still there. He hasn't given up on himself. And as long as you haven't given up on yourself, you always have a chance where one punch can separate that guy from his consciousness. Good exchange. He fires back. <laughs> A hook for you, and a hook right back. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. Parries that punch intended for the head. This is one of those moments where you just wish you could pick up the phone and call up the world and say, tune in. Everybody should be watching this, right? I have a cell phone. I might do that right now. <laughs> Start dialing. So swiftly able to turn defense into offense. Nice counter punch. And what you're noticing here is his opponent is starting to be a little wary of letting his jab go because every time he jabs, he gets caught. He gets hit, but he gives it right back. Official judges scores. Let's send it up to the ring. Bazooka's your winner by a unanimous decision. And that was a surprise right there. Coming into this fight, we thought we'd see maybe a knockout. But no, we wound up 